Yeah, hi friends, my name is Rich Chandan and welcome to my channel Energy and Environment Education. Uh, friends, uh, this video is very important for those aspirants who are looking forward to take exam uh, in this year, uh, Energy Manager's exam or Energy Auditor exam this year or in the coming years. So I have tried to keep the chapters as simple as possible. The contents that I have extracted from the chapter are relevant to only for examination point of view and I have tried to simplify them and present in a very simple manner such that you can prepare uh, for your exam and it's gonna help you to prepare in a be better way you know for examinations this year for coming years so uh, this is the second chapter friends and this is a part b of the second chapter in fact uh, the chapter is electric motors the first part already i have uploaded and if you have missed the first part you can go through also uh, if you have missed any other chapter the first chapter also i have uploaded that also you can go through in the first part of this chapter basically i have started with uh, an introduction on, on motors first thing second thing is i have also discussed on the type of motors i have tried to explain them uh, with a short, short video also uh, also characteristics of motors uh, and the application of motors and as well as the advantages of motors those things I have discussed in the first part in the second part we will be discussing on the other aspects of the motors so uh, let's start the video first friends Uh, so as far as the content is concerned friend in the first part uh, part a of this particular chapter i have discussed on the ac motors and their characteristics now in the second part part b i am going to discuss on the dc motors also i'll be explaining on the difference between ac and dc motors uh, also the motor efficiency part the uh, important calculations for you to understand and important formula for you to understand relevant to examination point of view those things i'll discuss in this particular video also the slip what is slip all about and the important formula related to slip that can come in the examination those things also i'll be discussing in this particular video apart from this energy efficiency opportunities we'll see and the different losses in motors that i'll explain you and the how to reduce those losses those things also i'll be dealing with in this particular video friends so we'll start with an introduction i mean it's a small video sort of on dc motors so let's see the video first friends Working principle of DC motor. Working principle of DC motor is very simple. We can see that when the current conductor is placed in magnetic field, it experiences some force in particularly direction. The very basic construction of a DC motor contains a current carrying armature, which is connected to the supply and through commutator segments and brushes. The armature is placed between north and south pole of a permanent or an electromagnet, in elementary model. One single turn of conductor, is placed between two opposite poles. If we start to supply DC, via commutator system, current will start to flow. As we see positive terminal of a battery is connected to left conductor of a turn. And negative terminal is connected to right conductor of a turn. As we see in model, north pole of the magnet is placed near left side. And south pole is placed near right side of the turn. Current in left side flows inward. And current in right side flows outward. As we see. Conductor is carrying current and they placed in magnetic field. Both of them experienced mechanical force acted on them. Direction of mechanical force can be easily determined by applying Fleming's left hand rule. To do this, spread out your left thumb, forefinger, and second finger so they are all at 90 degrees to one another. With that, if the forefinger is aligned along direction of magnetic field, from north pole to the south pole, and second finger is aligned along direction of the current and left side conductor, then thumb indicates direction of mechanical force. Similarly, 
If the forefinger is a line along direction of magnetic field, from North Pole to the South Pole, and second finger is a line along direction of the current in right side conductor. Then thumb indicates direction of mechanical force. Due to this upward and downward forces on the turn. One torque is produced when turn rotates on clockwise direction as shown. After rotation of the turn, turn comes to vertical position in respect of the magnetic field. At this position there is no current in conductor because turn, conductor and brushes rest between two commutators. Hence, there is no force acting on conductor, by due to moment of, inertia, turn continue to rotate and comes horizontal again. Position of conductor has been changed here. That means conductor which was previously in left position comes to right position. And which was previously in right position comes to left position. At that position, we can determine mechanical force, with applying Fleming's left hand rule. Let's do that. To do this, spread out your left thumb, forefinger and second finger, so they are all at 90 degrees to one to another. So if forefinger is a line in direction of magnetic field, that is, from North Pole to South Pole, and second finger is aligned in direction of a current in the left side conductor, then thumb indicates direction of mechanical force. This is clearly upward here. So if forefinger is a line in direction of magnetic field, that is, from North Pole to South Pole, and second finger is aligned in direction of a current in the right side conductor, then thumb indicates direction of mechanical force. This is clearly downward here. Do this upward, and downward forces, turn, tends to rotate in clockwise direction. From that explanation we can come to conclusion that Here in this model we can see that Whichever conductor comes near South Pole, experience upward mechanical force And near North Pole, downward mechanical force And do this continuously forces, mechanical turn rotate, even if battery is not connected particularly DC motor, rotates, at the same principle like this elementary model. Instead of single turn in DC motor we have mountain turns on major coil. And instead of two poles there is number of poles, installed. Uh, so I hope friends you might have enjoyed the video, you might have understood now what is DC motor all about the different components of DC motors and the working uh, how it works the working principle of DC motors you must have understood now with the help of that video which I have shown you in the last slide so and now we'll see the another important part of the chapter that is the difference between the AC motor and the DC motor this type of question you can expect friend in the examination maybe they can ask you to highlight at least five differences between AC and DC motors or maybe 10 also so you may expect this type of question as a short answer type questions or maybe a part of long answer type questions some part also can come in the as a objective type question also you can expect some part of you know, this part of chapter so you can expect as an objective type question also or true false type question also or match the following type question also you may expect uh, from this part of chapter so this is very important to you to understand the difference between AC and DC motors so let's see the differences first so as for uh, uh, first difference is like uh, the AC motor is driven by AC current the, and the DC motor is driven by the tired current DC current second difference is like uh, it, uh, AC motors are mainly of two types synchronous mot AC motors and the induction motors while DC motors are uh, of two types also that is brushes uh, DC motor with brushes and the DC motor without process. So these are two types of DC motors. And uh, as far as the efficiency is concerned, uh, the efficiency of AC motor is less, while the efficiency of the DC motor is high. This is a comparison. Also, uh, as far as the commutators and brushes are concerned, uh, it's absent in AC motors, while it is present in DC motors. Again, as far as maintenance is concerned, it requires less maintenance, while DC motor requires more maintenance or excessive maintenance. As far as the starting of motor is concerned, a three-phase motor is self-starting, 
but sometimes a, a, or in case of ac uh, motor uh, in phase one single phase ac motors it requires a, a starting mechanism but while in case of dc motors always it's a self starting in nature so these are some of the differences also some more differences are, are there uh, like suppose uh, in case of ac motor you see it Amature is stationary while the in the case of DC motors amateur rotates. Then they in the case of AC motors uh, three input terminals are there RYP while in case of DC motors you have two input terminals. Uh, also you can say uh, as far as loading concerned uh, in the case of AC motors it shows a slow response to the change in load while DC motors shows a quick response to the change in load. Uh, as far as life expectancy is concerned uh, AC motors do not have brushes and commuters so they are very rigged and have a uh, high life expectancy, expectancy while in case of dc motors uh, the life expectancy is less uh, in case of applications is concerned the ac motors are required where there is a need of high speed and variable torque applications there you need the ac motors while the dc motors required where there is a need for variable speed and the high torque it's also uh, also important is the practical uses uh, like suppose uh, it's used in large industries while the DC motors are mainly used for the small domestic appliances. So these are some of the differences between the AC motors and DC motors. You need not learn all of them, at least five to seven you can uh, buy hard. But suppose if they ask you to uh, at least highlight 10 of them, then you can uh, uh, I mean, keep in mind all these different differences between the AC motors and DC motors. But at least five of them you must remember uh, for uh, the exam purpose because they may ask you in a short answer type question friends basically. So this is a very important part of the chapter you must remember. And now this is one important formula friends power consumption in motors this you can expect as a uh, I mean uh, augmented type questions where some numericals can be asked on based on this part of formula so you must uh, learn this formula by heart this formula so maybe they can ask you to uh, I mean uh, calculate the power input so formula is 3 into uh, vi cos phi or voltage into into current into power factor cos phi so this is a very important formula to calculate the power input also they may ask you to calculate the electrical power input in terms of kilowatt so they may give you the mechanical shaft output and the motor efficiency uh, and then you may be asked to calculate the electrical power input in terms of kilowatt or maybe they will give you the power input in terms of kilowatt and the power factor and then also they may ask you to calculate the uh, electrical power input in terms of kva so basically friends the same i mean you need to calculate the electrical power input but uh, you may be uh, you may get different different uh, I mean uh, the parameters like suppose they may give you sometimes mechanical shaft output and the motor efficiency then they may ask you to calculate the electric power input or may they may give you power input or power factor and then they may ask you to calculate the electric power input or maybe they will give you the voltage current and power factor and then they may ask you to calculate the power input so formula is the same but the, they may ask you in different ways so you must not confuse and you must learn all this type of of uh, from numericals they may ask you so in the uh, obligatory question friends or maybe a part of short attack question friends so this formula is very important for you to understand and a uh, uh, very important formula for you to understand friend is the slip uh, it's very important for you uh, uh, as far as the assumption is concerned uh, you must understand the what is slip all about the definition of slip and also the formula that is displayed on the screen so you may be asked to either define the slip what is all about uh, also they may ask you a short uh, numerical type questions based on this formula also you may expect to have some other type of questions based on this formula also you may expect a part of long answer type question friend also based on uh, this formula some numericals you may be asked so this is very important part of the chapter so first of all remember what is slip all about the general definition of slip second thing this formula where you, this formula can be used to solve uh, simple numericals for arbitrary type questions and also this formula can be used as a part of long answer type questions where this slip will be uh, included as a part of another uh, I mean a complete numerical uh, based question friends so uh, let's see what is slip all about so slip is nothing but the difference between the synchronous speed of the electric motor magnetic field and the shaft rotating speed so it is measured in rpm or frequency also it is commonly expressed as a slip as a ratio between the shaft rotation speed and the synchronous speed so uh, the formula is s equals to under bracket ns minus n divided by ns into 100 where s equals to slip ns is the synchronous speed of magnetic field and na is the shaft rotating speed so basically you may be asked in different ways this particular uh, part of the chapter that is slip so please remember what is slip all about also please remember this formula and also please remember the application of this formula i mean either they can ask you simple 
a formula based uh, numericals or they may include it this formula as a part of a big numerical so the different ways it can comprehend so it's very important for you to understand so do not miss this part of the chapter please remember slip and as far as the energy saving opportunities in motors concerned friends so there are different uh, energy saving opportunities but you can remember at least five of them as far as assumption is concerned so they may ask you to highlight at least five energy saving opportunities in motors so may not remember every one of them but at least five of them uh, among all these uh, different opportunities that i have listed here so let's see the different opportunities friends so first of all you need the stopping idle or redundant running of motors suppose any motor is running idle so you can stop them easily and you can easily save energy energy second thing is matching a motor with the load i mean if the motor runs at optimum load that's what i explained in the first part also then you can have better efficiency and better energy saving possibilities there third part is operation of underloaded delta connected motor in star connection so if you run the underloaded delta connected motor in a star connected motor connection so you have a better opportunity to save energy then soft starters you can use to save energy also you can use the vfds uh, also improving driving drive transmission efficiency that also improves the energy saving potential and also use of high efficiency motors so if any motor if it is old and less efficient if you replace them with a high energy efficient motors so definitely you will have better option to save energy and implement in motor drive systems is also a possibility of energy saving opportunities friends so these are some of the opportunities you may not remember all of them or if you uh, possible you can remember but at least five of them you must remember as a as far as the exam is concerned so you may be asked as a short answer type questions where they will ask you to do, at least highlight five energy saving opportunities in motors so you can explain any of them any of these five uh, uh, saving opportunities in motors friends and now the different uh, losses of motors so you must i am not going to explain you all the losses here i mean but uh, you must remember all these losses so they can ask you uh, as a short answer type questions or also a part of long answer type questions where they will ask you to first of all name the different types of losses and explain them so uh, these things are given in books so you can go through, just go through the uh, part of the chapter that i am highlighting here different losses of motors so basically they are core losses starter losses straight load losses friction and windage losses and rotor losses so all these five losses are there so you must first of all remember the losses in motors uh, first point second point is to explain them so they may ask you to either only give you the five losses of motors or maybe they may ask you to at least give five losses of motors and briefly explain them this type of question you can expect in the exam friends so please remember all these type of losses in motors uh, as far as the efficiency of motor and how to reduce losses so this is in concern so uh, again the same different type of losses are there and the ways to reduce them is highlighted here so like suppose uh, if there is friction loss then you can use properly selected bearings to decrease the friction losses and then let's like, suppose if there is windage losses so you can optimize fan design hysteresis losses if there is then you can use a low electrical grade steel and eddy current losses you can reduce lamination thickness shatter copper losses reduce shatter winding resistance shatter uh, rotor copper losses you can reduce rotor winding resistance so basically these are different types of losses are there and uh, the ways how can you can reduce those losses those things are highlighted they can ask you to i mean explain these type of losses so as a uh, question is concerned in examination it may ask you to uh, first of all uh, list out the different losses in motors first thing second thing uh, you can briefly explain those losses and third thing is okay, how to reduce these losses so the, it can be a short answer type question also can be a part of long answer type question also friends they may ask you they may ask you in full or maybe a part of it so very important for you as far as the examination is concerned so please remember the different type of losses in motors uh, also for a friend uh, one more formula is important for you that is energy saving calculation if you replace uh, an old motor with a new one so how much energy is saved that type of question also you can expect a formula based question or maybe they can ask you as a part of a, a other question i mean other numerical a big, a big numerical you can say so this formula is very important so this uh, straight away they can ask you a formula based question that also can, can come in the examination or can be used as a part of a long uh, numerical based question so please remember this formula where the energy saving calculation is uh, calculated uh, so basically uh, they will give you the old efficiency of standard motor like suppose old efficiency is given and also the efficiency of new motor that is replaced uh, with is also given uh, also they will give you the power output of motor and the number of hours of operation of motor per year so if they give you all these things you need to calculate the energy saved 
so basically formula is energy saved equals to p under bracket 1 by e old that is efficiency of the old motor minus under bracket 1 by efficiency of the new motor and uh, bracket close into 100 into hours of operation so everything will be given to you straight away and that's just they will be asked uh, they're asking you to calculate the energy saved by replacing the old motor with a more uh, energy efficient motor so how much energy is saved that type of question can be asked you or they may include this type of uh, formula uh, i mean numerical uh, as a part of a big numerical so you may expect in a long uh, answer based question also uh, numericals or maybe only a short answer based question so this formula is very important also they can expect you can expect to have this type of uh, formula as a objective type questions where straightforward only they will give you all the inputs and only to find the energy saved so those type of cash questions also you can expect as an objective numerical based questions friends so very important for you uh, for this part of the uh, chapter friends so that's all for today friends i hope uh, the content that i presented you in the part b and the part a of electric motor uh, is useful to you and can help you to prepare for your examination only my effort is to simplify the content that is uh, relevant for the examination point of view so i'm trying to explain you in that way only the question that you can expect uh, in examination uh, in the coming year or in this year also so those things only i'm going i'm highlighting you in the videos that i'm uh, slowly uploading you friends so this is the end of the part b also part c will be coming soon so please be connected with me for the part c of the this chapter electric motor friends so please connect with me friends uh, i hope that you have liked the video and i'm also going to upload you more uh, such videos in the coming days so basically uh, i would like to uh, take your suggestions your feedbacks your inputs so please connect with me friends this is my email id chandan sudeep 7 at gmail.com you can uh, write your suggestions here you can send me uh, your, any inputs you have on content or any other things you can also take my support any suggestion from my side if you are expecting something any help you want that also you can write it down here friends also this is my mobile number 9354095167 you can connect straight away with me you can talk to me if you any support if you want from my side any suggestion if you want to give or you could want to take from me you can straight away connect with me uh, also friends uh, this is my website techindustries.com where i have posted some blogs uh, based on uh, energy and sustainability all this about so you can just go through the blogs also i'm going to uh, post more blogs in coming days so you can connect with me on my website also so uh, please do connect with me and please uh, uh, give any suggestions any inputs if you have and uh, from your side friends and as far as uh, the last and the lot not the least friends please do subscribe my channel if you have not yet done so this will help me it will boost my morale to uh, make more such videos uh, for you uh, to support you in anyhow uh, so please do subscribe my uh, channel friends also please press the bell icon because i'm going to post a lot of new videos in coming days so uh, automatically when I, when i post in a new video it will prompt you up and you can just watch my videos and get take support take help from those videos friends and also please share this uh, video with your friends colleagues and whoever you concerned who you think that this video can help them in in the coming examination or in coming years so please do uh, share the video uh, to your friends or colleagues and please uh, be connected with me so that's all for today friends and uh, thanks uh, thanks a lot friends